The single home family market in Fort Lauderdale is changing slowly. More homes are coming on the market, but not at the same rate at which people are looking to buy them. So we're going to cover things that you're going to need to know, like common misconceptions. Do you use the builder's lender, the title company? Can you actually over upgrade your property? And how do you negotiate for the things that you typically have don't negotiate for when you buy resale? For example, one of our clients, we actually came in, jumped in and helped them out with the new construction by just getting involved early enough on and us coming in, we actually ended up saving them $10,000 on the price of their lot. The builder wanted to charge them a lot premium for a lot that they had already looked at because the builder's price changed. They were gonna to try to pass that price change on to our client. So if saving $10,000 by using a team of experts like me and my team is of interest to you, listen on. In the current sweet spot price point for homes in Fort Lauderdale between $350,000 and $850,000, there are currently 230 homes available. And folks, while the condo market may be swinging towards a neutral market area, or maybe even towards something of a buyer's market, okay, the limited availability of single family homes, okay, is still providing a challenge for many to find to find a single family home. On the new home front, the supply chain, the previous supply chain issues are decreasing, and basically new home starts from 21 from 2022 over to, over 2021 are up 16% and forecasts for 2023 are basically doubling that if not more. Lead times for new homes are returning to the more normal three to four months from breaking ground to move in and, and even less for existing spec homes. Okay, so now, now many folks are asking, what's a spec home? Okay, so basically what a spec home isn't for one of our YouTubers, uh, Chris, this is what we're gonna, gonna go ahead and take a look at tomorrow. Okay, a spec home is basically a home that the builder has, has already started building. They basically come in varied levels, level one to level nine. And what that really does is it really kind of defines how quickly the home is going to be ready, uh, ready for somebody to purchase or ready for somebody to move in. Obviously, a spec uh, number one is kind of far out. They've gone ahead and built it. They don't have a contract on it. So there's a whole a whole lot of conversation, a whole different kind of dialogue that goes on around spec homes. Um, I'd strongly encourage you guys to, if you have any questions about that or if you're interested in buying spec homes because it does have a shorter sales cycle or a shorter build cycle, reach out, let us know. You can call us, you can email us, you can DM us, drop us a text, or you can go ahead and just click on the Zoom link, set up a, a time to chat. We can kind of go over that, anything, uh, go over spec homes. We can go over anything else that you may be uh, interested in or maybe questioning in regards to the South Florida. We can go over that or anything else that you may have questions about in the Fort Lauderdale uh, real estate market. So, But basically, all of these things changing and new construction and a lot of the builders getting things back to, to what they perceive as normalcy, which is basically where we're looking to go okay you know there are the new construction may be a viable alternative for folks but i'll let you know now there are a number of things to consider for new construction so probably one of the first common misconceptions that folks have is that we're all in this together I've walked in, I've seen the, I've seen all the models, the models look great. The people, the uh, the sales folks that are working in the builders, in the builder's office or in the, in the models themselves, you know, they greeted me, they gave me coffee. They, you know, in some cases they've even bought me lunch or, you know, we've gotten a nice, nice little bottle, of, nice little glass of champagne, you know, or whatever. Okay. And so we're all just one big happy family here. But folks, let me just set the story straight on that one, on this. Okay. The sales manager, the sales reps, everybody who's on site at a builder site, they work for the builder make no mistake about it. They work for the builder. The only person that's working for you is the realtor that you're bringing in to help you with this purchase. The next big misconception is basically the model that I'm looking at, okay, is exactly what I'm gonna get. You've seen it in car dealerships, you've seen it in high-end furniture stores, and you're gonna see it in the, uh, in the housing market too, okay? The models that the builders put out, those models are absolutely 100% gorgeous. It's the top of the line. Everything it gives you everything that you want. It's every possible and conceivable option in there. I mean, there's probably options in there that you haven't even thought of. I know that when we've done walkthroughs, some of the stuff that we've seen is like, hmm, can we really get that? That's kind of cool. I kind of thought that. Okay. But first bit of advice. Okay. One of the things you're going to see in the models and you're going to see in the builder showroom is all of these different things that you can add on to all these upgrades and add ons. Okay. You're going to want to make sure that you're not adding on so much onto the price of the house to where it either a makes the house not be able to appraise for whatever it is that you're, that you're paying for it. If you're financing. Okay. Or are you going to have the highest price house in the neighborhood that basically makes it difficult for you to, to have to sell if you have to sell 
well, or if you're looking to sell in a couple of years, you do not want to be in a situation where you can't get out of the house what you put into it. Folks, as we said before in many of our videos, real estate purchase is both a, covers an expense, i.e. your housing expense, okay? It also should be part of your investment portfolio and like with any other asset, okay? It should appreciate in value. The last thing that you want to do is put yourself in a position where that asset is already so high that it's not going to be able to appreciate anymore except for over a long, long, long period of time or if there are significant changes in market conditions as we have gone through in the past couple of years. And let me kind of give an example of, of kind of how this works. We have some friends of ours, like most of our clients, they've actually become our friends, which is terrific because that's something that Susan and I really, really strive for. But essentially, here's what happened, okay? They went in and saw a, went into a, a new builder's site and candidly, the builder was great. They were wonderful, they were wonderful folks. They greeted us very, very warmly, gave us all some soda to drink and kind of talked about different things, okay? But the model that, that our friends, our clients were looking at, there was a lot of things that they wanted to add to that model. It just really wasn't where they wanted it to be, okay? And that was a, was causing a problem for them, was causing a challenge. When they added in the additional padding for the carpeting because they had young children, for example, that was a, a significant increase in cost, okay? One of the things that they wanted to be able to have rounded corners on the walls, not squared off corners, again, because of small children. They also wanted to have a certain type of tile that they had seen in one of the other models that wasn't available in there. Or the it actually it was available but it was going to be a significant upgrade the most significant one significant piece of it is that what they really wanted to have was a en little enclosed patio so they could sit out and enjoy things and have a place where they could keep an eye on their kids that upgrade for that patio was going to be very very expensive and by the time we put the price of everything together when we added up the cost of all of the enhancements to that model it got to the point to where when we talked to the lender that the lender came back and said i'm sorry we're probably not going to be able to appraise it at that high so you're going to have to change your mind on some of those enhancements. Not really what any new home buyer wants to hear. So what we did is we actually sat down with the builder and with the lender and with the folks that run the run all the different enhancements and all these different upgrades and came up and we compared different models to see what do we want in model A that we need to have and want to have and how does that compare to what's standard in model B? So it's, it, and we, we are, the, the good news is we were able to go back and work out a terrific deal for everybody. We found we actually got a different model that gave them everything that they wanted and some of the things that they didn't even know they could get and it ended up actually costing less than it would have been to add all those enhancements onto the original model so there are ways of doing this but again the big thing about that is is that would not have been capable would not have happened had they not been able to use a real estate expert like my team and i to get in there and negotiate on their behalf so which brings us actually brings us to the third and probably the most com the most common misconception it's basically that you know i really don't need a realtor to buy new construction i mean the house is brand new the deep the, the salesperson loves me they think i'm great they're you know they want to they want to work with me everything is terrific okay and i'm not really sure if the kind of the misconception around that is from some of the folks we've talked to have said well you know i'm not going to use a, a, a realtor because i can get the, the builder to basically give me a credit for the commission that they would pay you to do this folks that's not right okay the commission for they would pay a realtor is already built into the price of the home it's going to the commission is going to be it's there it's not going to be accredited back to you if you don't use a realtor that's the first one the second thing is that it's a new home what can possibly be wrong i can tell you hand on heart the number of times that a home has actually been absolutely positively perfect okay it's not it's never been that way even in the properties the homes that we've worked with buyers on that are up well over a million dollars there are always things that are that need to be monitored things that need to be adjusted, things that need to be changed. So somebody needs to be watching this for you and making sure this for you, because you're not gonna be able to be, be doing that in conjunction with basically getting everything packed up. You may or may not have an existing home to sell that you're working on to get that done, okay? So there's a lot of things that, that you need to consider going into it. The other thing is, is that most realtors, especially expert realtors like my team and I, we know all about the builders. We've researched the builders. In many cases, we've worked with the builders before. We know which builders are very, very good. We know which builders have presented challenges to us okay we know about the quality of the product we understand what complaints may have may have been in there and quite frankly the builders they actually like it when realtors come in because that helps make sure that the process goes very very well on both sides having a realtor come in and assist the buyers on the purchase basically make sure that the buyers understand everything that needs to be done and that they have somebody they can talk to there is a voice out there that is maybe somewhat a little more reasonable to things go awry and you, the buyer, sometimes get a little upset or a little excited or a little agitated about things. It's a lot easier to have somebody that they can that can step in and kind of make sure that everything is taken care of. I mean, plus, you know, the other thing you want to look at is most folks don't think about this, 
homes, but when you're buying a new home, in the back of your mind, you always want to think, okay, if for some reason we need to sell this home, maybe a change in our family situation, maybe a change in our job situation, maybe a change, could be anything, okay? You want to look at also for a potential resale value. You do not want to find yourself in a situation where you have spent more money on a home to get it built than you can than you can get when you sell. Now, I, as, as like most things, I have a little story around this and it's kind of a sad story that ended up actually working out in the long run. We got some folks who called us. They were looking, bought a home back in November of 2017. Kind of a little bit at the height of the market. A beautiful home, got a great deal on the home. Truly a great deal. In March of 2019, just over a year and a half later, okay, there was a significant change in their situation. One of their one of their parents passed away and they needed to move north to take care of a of a semi-invalid surviving parent. So they had to sell the house. They were looking around, they were when they were trying to price out the house, we went we went out and talked to them about listing their home for them. The husband was just adamant that his house was just as good as anything that was brand new coming on the market, and he was dead set on getting what they were asking for new homes in a second in a third phase two phases have been completed since they had bought so they had bought a year and a half before anyhow the upshot basically came down to where they not only did they not get what he was looking for but unfortunately and they ended up when everything was said and done they ended up netting even less than they paid for when they bought the home a year and a half before and the reason for that is real simple they had put a lot of enhancements in the into the property they thought it was going to be their forever home they put a lot of enhancements in there and those enhancements basically the cost of the home up over what the value of the home was. The other thing you want to look at is purchase contracts are not standard. Every builder has their own purchase contract. And folks, I'm telling you, they're about this thick, okay? There's everything from, from doggy doors to basement doors to bedroom doors. There's everything and everything in between. There's all kinds of different things. You want to make sure that you're working with somebody who understands those contracts, who can navigate those contracts and negotiate on your behalf. The other thing is, is that, you know, unfortunately, everything else, we hope for the best and we plan for the worst. One of the advantages of working with a realtor, especially experts like my team and I, is that we have relationship with settlement attorneys, we have relationships with real estate attorneys, so that in the event that we need to get some type of intervention, okay, we can do that. We can look to bring an attorney in, we can look to coordinate with those, and in many cases, just because we it's somebody that we have a relationship with you know very if we need to write a letter if we need an interpretation it's typically at little to no cost at all initially again a kind of an intangible benefit of working with a realtor on the buy side so i guess to kind of sum this up is basically this is probably one of the most important if not the most important purchases you're going to make and it's probably going to be one of the most expensive and you want to make sure that that you have everybody that you can have and everybody that you need in your corner helping to make sure that everything that needs to happen and minimizing and mitigating that, that anything that doesn't need to happen or shouldn't happen from happen. Again, that's one of the reasons why you, you look to experts like my team and I to represent you because in this entire transaction, folks, we are the only group that work for you. Everybody in the builder's office works for the builder. The lender works for the builder. The title company works for the transaction. The only person working for you is your realtor. And we talked a little bit about value versus cost, and I want to take a little, take a minute to kind of go into that a little bit more, okay? And what I mean by that is basically, it comes down to a, to a basic question. And what the question is, is, this, is that, can I over-improve my home? Okay. And the answer is yes. And, it, and to make, to kind of add insult to injury, not only can you over improve your home, but you can end up doing it by paying more for some of the enhancements that, you, that, that you're looking at. An example would be lighting upgrades. Okay. Now the builder will tell you all these kind of great and wonderful things about these terrific lighting and everything else and everything else that's available for it and how you can design this and design that and all it's, everything is great. And when you start looking at it from the standpoint of, well, you know, it's only $2,000 for this and if you, if you, if you you amortize that over the life of the loan 30 years it's like only three dollars a month okay the lighting upgrades that builders have are usually rather generic okay and, and they're usually rather expensive because builders realize it's a high emotion product and therefore it's a high profitability product i'm telling you that that you can go out and you can go to lowe's you can go to home depot or you can go to a lighting supply store okay and you can probably find the same if not a better quality a better grade of lighting at much less cost than the builder Okay, and even if you factor in the cost of getting somebody to come in and put those lights in for you, okay, it's typically a lot less than some of the
the upgrades for the builders, okay? The other thing is, is that crown molding is kind of, sometimes it's in, sometimes it's out. Right now, it's kind of in and out, depending upon the location, depending upon whether it's a single family home or a condo. Okay? Crown molding to have a builder put in is basically, it's God awful expensive. It doesn't really cost a whole lot for the builder to get it. It costs even less for the builder to go ahead and have it put in, but because it adds to the aesthetics of the property, okay, there's a high emotional value, therefore there's a high profitability value. The other one too, this is one that we actually had to explain this to one of our clients the hard way. There was a certain type of knob that they wanted on the cabinets in the kitchen. It was a certain model of a knob. And when I went back and figured out the cost of all those knobs, and keep in mind, kitchen cabinet doors and kitchen drawers, okay, you're looking at sometimes upwards of 50 to 65 or 70 knobs, depending upon how many cabinets and how many drawers you have. When I broke down the, we broke down the cost of those knobs from the builder's perspective, they were $17 a knob. $17 a knob for a little knob that went on the cabinet door or went on the cabinet drawer. Folks, I went on Amazon, found the exact same knob for less than seven bucks a knob. So it's one of these things where, again, it adds high aesthetic value. It's highly emotional. Therefore, it's highly profitable from a builder perspective. And the other thing about over-improving is, is that even if you were buying a new home and whether you're using the blender or you're using your own lender, they're gonna come back with an appraised value for the property. The last position you wanna be in or the last situation that you wanna be in is where you come back and you've already negotiated the cost of everything and you're looking to close and all of a sudden, now that everything is done, the appraiser goes in, the appraiser comes back and says, hey, your home looks great, okay? But on your now upgraded price of $450,000, we're only going to basically lend up to $425,000. That means that because you have a contract in place, that means you have to come out of pocket or may mean you have to come out of pocket the additional $25,000. That's happened to one of our clients. We were able to get things sorted out and get things fixed. A lot of conversations with the builder, a lot of negotiation with the sales manager, and even with the superintendents, we were able to get it fixed. But folks, that ended up causing a significant delay in our client getting into their home, which ended up having a ripple effect because then they had a problem selling where to live when they had to sell their home. They had to go out in an Airbnb. They ended up spending almost $5,000 for a month and a half in an Airbnb for them and their family. So folks cannot overstate the fact that you have to be careful how much you look at putting into your home. You wanna make sure that you do not have the cost of your home exceed the value. So let's kind of talk about how new homes, how they constructed, okay? Everybody's heard horror stories. Everybody's heard great things. You can read all the wonderful reviews that are on Google and on and on Yelp and everything else about this builder, that builder, whatever else. Okay, we live in a hurricane state. We live in a, in a state that has a hurricane area. Whether it's Palm Beach County, Miami Dade County, or Broward County, there's there are. It's a hurricane area. Okay, so those create special rules and special guidelines for how homes are being built. Okay, now. I'm not saying that builders don't build in accordance with those guidelines, okay? I'm not saying that. However, in some cases, it may be just the minimum that needs to be done, and that just may not be enough. That minimum may just not be enough for you. It may not be enough for your comfort, it may not be enough for your safety, or it may not be enough for the combination of both. What you need to do is, is compare. You need to look at not just comparing builders, the builders and the models on price alone, compare the builder's product compare the builder's quality, read the reviews, ask for recommendations, ask for who for to speak with people who have bought there, okay? We have one builder who's a fantastic builder, and I'm not gonna say their name, but basically one of the challenges that we saw when we were coming and watch one of our clients' homes being built, okay, was that they were putting in plastic piping, just regular generic plastic piping, as opposed to putting in PVC piping, okay? And it, I mean, it just was one of those things that we saw, we went back and questioned it, and they came back and said, you know, hey, uh, we've made a mistake, we're sorry about that. Another area that came in is basically is electrical panels. Okay? Okay. If you bought a condo or you bought into condos or you're, if you looked at, at resale properties, you'll know that all electrical panels are not the same. They have different ratings. They have different amounts of availability to add new circuits in. In single family homes, the trend right now is to put a electrical panel that meets the minimum requirements based upon the current load requirements. Okay, That current load may re requirement may not give you the ability to put in a charger for your electric car. That current load limitation may not give you the ability to add a second air conditioner if you need to add one. It may not give you the ability to add in the, the dedicated line needed for that hot tub you're going to put on your back porch. Folks, 
You need to take a look at that. You need to understand what's going on. You need to be able to ask those questions. And more importantly, you need to understand what the responses are to those questions. There's no question that is a bad question when looking at buying a home, whether it's resale or new, okay? The only difference is, is whether or not you know which questions to ask. And in many cases, folks that are doing this for the first time, second time, even a third time, they don't really know all the questions to ask. And I mean this in the most sincere terms. It's, you're gonna want to understand what the construction process is. I cannot begin to describe the elation that we've seen on some of our clients' faces when they go in, they, they go in the, on day one, oh, this is the lot we're gonna get. We're vision, we're kind of just visualizing our new home, okay? Then they come back in about two or three weeks, they see that basically the, uh, the, the slab has been poured, okay? And they're putting in footers. And then they come back in another week or two and they start seeing walls going up, okay? And then they come back and all this, they come back in a week and a half later and all of a sudden the plumbing's in, the drywall's on, the insulation's on, okay? The ceiling is in for the first floor, which is also the roof, also the floor for the second going in there, okay? But they haven't had an opportunity to see what's going in there. Is the tubing the right size? What was requested or what was required? Sometimes, most of the times, yes. Sometimes, no. You need to have somebody who's going to go out and project manage that process for you and make Make sure that the things that are supposed to be there and the things that need to be there are there. So it's just something you need to know before you sign that purchase contract. Because folks, once you sign that contract, it's, you know, it, it is. No, all contracts are not equal, okay, and all builders are not the same. You want to make sure that you have somebody there by your side and who has your back when you're looking at making this very, very important purchase. As I said, one of the most important purchases you're going to make in your life. Basically, it comes to, and now, we, now we're getting down to kind of the nuts and bolts of things, okay? We've we found the area that we want to live in, okay? And we've taken a look and we've gone out and taken a look at the new construction there. And we've gone back and we've talked to some of the builders there and we've seen what's going on. And we, we, we've decided on a builder, we've decided on a lot, we've decided on a model. We've just even gone back, we've even gotten to the point where we've decided on our colors and our upgrades and everything else, okay? So now, what's next? Okay, well, we look to look at it from the standpoint of yours or mine. And what I'm talking about is the other groups that they need to be involved to make this transaction happen. Okay, most folks, most folks nowadays are coming into a real estate transaction with a pre-approval letter from a local lender. Folks, if you haven't done that, I would encourage you to do that. If nothing else, it helps to basically manage expectations. This is what you're approved for. You may not want to spend that much, but at least you know which ballpark you should be looking in. A number of folks come in and they really don't have a feel for what they're, what they can spend and what they want to spend. Folks, when you go onto a builder site, they're going to have a lender on site. They're going to have a title company on site. They're probably even going to have an inspection company on site. They may even have an appraiser there to kind of help give you a feel for the ultimate value of your home. So, and they're going to encourage you and incentivize you to basically use their lender and their title company, their inspection company, even their insurance company. And folks, that's not a necessarily a bad thing. In many cases, those incentives that the builder can offer you can basically exceed a lot of what you can get going out on your own. We've had numerous instances. We have some very, very dear friends that moved out of this area, moved up north in Florida. And he was, and our friend, and he's just like, he's like a brother to me. So he knows exactly who he is. So, but basically he was adamant about using a friend of ours who's a lender. The guy took care, it's taking care of him through everything. I finally had to sit down and say, dude, just take a look at what the costs are going to be. The builder is going to cover your closing costs. They're going to pay all of your closing costs up to $20,000. That's significant. That gives you the ability to buy down the rate so that you're actually the cost of your money is actually less than if you go to somebody else it's also going to give you an opportunity to possibly even get some of the money that you put down back from the standpoint of, of that so if a builder's willing to contribute to your closing costs or pay your closing costs okay compare that against what the other lender is going to offer builders title companies are more than happy to tell you what their costs are going to be for all the title charges the, the lien searches and everything else they're going to tell you be more than happy to tell you what's going to be compare those to the cost of the title company that you're going to use. In many cases, I would say in far more cases than none that we have seen it what the builder offers up along with a little bit of negotiation that's been done to help to uh, kind of help move the whole transaction along. In many cases, you're going to end up doing a lot better having the builder working with the builder's lender. What I'm really talking about is that one of the benefits of using the builder's suggested lenders or title company or insurance company. Our friend works for an insurance company, okay? So he was able to get what he thought were great rates, okay? And they were very, very good rates. I kid you not, they were great, great rates. They were very good. We sat down and with using the builder's credit towards closing costs, we were able to buy the interest rate down significantly, significantly less than the prevailing rate. Now. 
because the builder's lender would knew what was going on with the builder, okay, we locked the loan in for a period of time. And if you have questions about what loan locks are, I'd encourage you to give us a call, at, you know, shoot us a text, send us an email, or set up a, a Zoom link. You know, we'll be happy to explain that whole process to you. And we'll even bring in one of our lenders to explain it to you too, because there are nuances that they're aware of that we as realtors are not always aware of. But anyhow, there was a problem in getting what they call the certificate of occupancy, which is basically the permission to live in a home. And there was a delay. And that delay was actually going to cause our friends and our clients to basically, it was going to go past the time that the loan was locked. Okay. Now this is back last year when interest rates were, when the Fed was doing three quarters of a point interest rate bumps every three months, interest rates were going way up from the 3% in January and February of 2022, upwards to over 6%, almost six and a half percent towards the end of last year. We were able to work with the builder and the lender to have the lender basically extend the lock and the cost for extending a lot because of our, the relationship that we had established to, with the builder, the builder picked up the additional cost to extend that lot. The, the upshot was basically that our client ended up getting an interest rate on a new home purchase that was under 5% when the prevailing rate was 6 and 3 eighths percent. Folks, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that's saving you a heck of a lot of money, okay? So don't just summarily dismiss that the builder's trying to get you to give up more of your hard-earned money or use some of them, use some of their vendors or their people to do it okay in many respects there are there's a reason for that builders typically have commitments with lenders to basically lend money at a very competitive rate okay and in some cases it may even be less than what the prevailing rate is from your own credit union or your own bank or your own existing mortgage company or if, if you're a veteran and you've been using like we are if you've been using usaa or navy federal sometimes it's even better than those than the service type organizations so don't just summarily dismiss using the builder's recommended lender or the builder's recommended title company or the insurance company. In many cases, it will come out to be something that is, is beneficial. And basically, so kind of all of these things speak to the importance of doing your homework and making sure that you have somebody with you on your side, working with you, working for you, to, to be there to clarify anything that you're not sure about. Our friends had no idea what a loan lock was and they wouldn't, and they wouldn't even have known anything about it had we not asked about it when we found out there was going to be a delay in doing that. The lenders, the builder's lender was very candid and said, hey, yes, we do offer it, okay, but we only offer it if somebody asks about it. Since you've asked about it, we'll go ahead and lock it in for you. And we'll go ahead and work with the builder to go ahead and get them to pay for it. That was a huge, huge tangible and intangible benefit that our client got. Number tangible because it didn't cost them money to get the loan lock extended. Intangible because now it made our clients feel like they really want the builder and the lenders really wanted to work with them. And that's a good that's a good feeling to have when the people that you're working with you feel like they're working with you. So folks, whether you're buying resale or whether you're buying new construction, working with a reputable, experienced, knowledgeable real estate agent like my team and I, okay, it is an absolute must. I mean, I guess the real question comes down to if somebody's gonna go ahead and pay for you to have an expert on your side, why wouldn't you take that offer and take that expert and have that expert there to represent you? Having that expert around is going to help make that buying process so much easier. As I said before, there are questions you're going to have. That document has language that in some cases, I've even thought they made it up. So again, having somebody there who's working for you can walk you through that process, make sure that your back is covered and make sure that everything is taken care of and somebody else is paying for it. How is that not a benefit to you as a buyer? Well, hopefully you found our video entertaining, you found it interesting, and you found it engaging. So until next time, 